we're making biochar in that can. That's the regular wood fire right there. And what's coming out of there is the exhaust from heating up that can without letting the wood burn inside. We are making biochar at the same time we're eating can. Won't take long and that'll be done. This is all we need to make biochar. Just a can. At the can, I got holes punched in. See the holes. Okay. Nothing on the bottom. Just holes at the cap side. And I've got one in here percolating right now. You can see the flames coming out in the front of it. You can hear it now. Look at that. Right in there. That purple flame. So we're putting this other can in here. We'll watch it, see when it's going to start. That yeah, really cool, huh? Now oh, that can is burning. Burn, baby, burn. Look at that. That's a good shot right there. And the other one's smoking. Okay, got things going now. Ooh, she's hissing. That's called burning without oxygen. Here we are in this wonderful, glorious bright, cloudy, cold, upper Michigan morning. I actually saw some snowflakes this morning. Huh. It is only October 11th. Oh, it might be the 12th already. Holy cow. But anyways, I'm going to unveil the making of our biochar cans. Give you an idea of what happens. This is a piece of biochar. Let me give you a close-up. I got a bucket here. This is biochar. Gets to be shiny. You see, it breaks apart really easy. That is honest to goodness, real biochar. And as ethical of a, of a method as I can conjure up. And that is by, I didn't use any trees. Oh yeah, that looks nice. What I did was I cut up the branches. I found out in the past that if you use live branches, the biochar works really well. I think because uh, it's so hot in the fire, if you use dry branches, it actually does burn in the can. And you get most of just ash. We aren't after ash, we're after this nice, consistent, hard, shiny material that actually has structure. And it's that structure, oh, that's why that was leaking out of the can. You can see it's sucked up right there. Last night I had a I think I got a video of it where it was kind of burning out of the side of the cover instead of through the holes. It looks like it's all intact. So it's still small in the holes. I did some real little pieces too. Let's see how they turned out right here. 
real little branches. Oh yeah. As soon as it starts to snap like that, you know you're good to go. What it amounts to is you need to have structure. Here's one that doesn't look like it's been as burnt. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Oh yeah, still good. The reason why you want to have structure and not just ash is what you're doing is you're creating homes for soil life. And there's, I don't know, I'm not a scientist, I don't know all the different types of soil life, but it's soil life that actually provides the fertilizer in the soil through their secretions. You know, they eat each other and they eat other things and they eat bacteria and as it goes through their digestive process, it becomes fertilized with the bacteria in their systems and when they secrete it out, that is the material that our plants will eat. So uh, what this biochar is doing is, is we're providing homes for a lot of soil life because there's so much surface material. There's all these little cracks and fissures and what that are created in the charcoal itself and that's where the home is for the for the soil life. So the more surface material you have, the more cracks and fissures, the more soil life you're going to have, the more fertilizer you're going to have, the healthier plants are going to be. Let's check the biochar here. Here it is. If it's if it turns into ashes, then the wood burned by fire itself, and it's not biochar. The wood has to burn without oxygen. And that's the can setup that I'm using that allows that to happen. 